Did, would it make sense? Does this just sound like common sense to you? I mean, I think it, we can all agree, all agree on this. Where it pleased him for us to go, it would be pleasing for us to go there. I mean, I don't have a very high education, but I think that's probably true. Amen. Anybody can agree with me on that? It pleased him for us to be where it pleased him for us to be. Yes. <laughs> where it pleased him for to, to say, this is where I want you to go. That would be pleasing. So in the pleasing is where all your help is. That's where your help is. All right, now, go over to Mark chapter number 6. I was going to have you go there. We've got to keep moving. We've shared this, I don't know how, we could share on this subject for, uh, you know, 20 services. And, and everything God shared with me about it, we wouldn't even have time to get it out. We're in the sixth chapter of Mark here. I want you to notice how Jesus uh, fed the 5,000. You ever read the story of the feeding of the 5,000? The Bible tells us that uh, he said, give ye them to eat, verse 37. And, and they say unto him, this is in uh, Mark 6. They say, shall we go and buy 100 or, or 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? He said unto them, how many loaves have you? Said, they, uh, uh, go and see. And when they knew, they said five and two fish. And he commanded them to make all sit down, them as his, his disciples, to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and breaking the loaves and gave them to his disciples. Now notice that. To set before them and the two fishes and divided, the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat and were filled. And you remember they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and uh, so forth. So it was about 5,000 men plus women and children, they say. Well, so that's a miracle. But notice here, this is how Jesus set this up. He didn't just say, well, just start handing it out willy-nilly. Find somebody and give a piece of bread. No, he said, let's do this this way. He said, have, have them sit down in groups. Have a group sit over there. Have a group sit over here. And they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. And then he said, uh, and then he, said he, he, gave, he blessed the, the, the uh, bread and fish, and then he started handing pieces of it to his apostles. We call them disciples, but they became the apostles. So he handed it to the twelve, and the twelve went to each one of those groups and handed it to somebody, and they spread it out. Isn't that right? Now, how many of you can see Jesus was not a uh, disorderly Jesus? He did things in a decent and an orderly way. Well, that's, I believe that's typology. They sat down here, notice what it says there, in companies. In th verse 39, he said, have them all sit down in companies. That's the same term he used over there in Mark 4. He said they went to their own company. I believe Jesus not only worked this miracle this way when he was feeding the 5,000, but I believe this is typology of how he distributes spiritual food to the body of Christ. In other words, he, he gives it to the leadership. The leadership gives it to the local assemblies that God called them to pastor. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I think that's probably what he's talking about. <laughs> Isn't that right? That's the way he does it. Now, notice it says over there, in fact, well, let me say this. If you read through the New Testament, uh, you know, the, 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 the uh, epistles, you'll find that the word church is used uh, about 110 times in the New Testament. Of those 110 times, now we know and understand that there is the church worldwide, the body of Christ worldwide, the ecclesia, the ones called out and saved by the blood of Jesus, and they're all part of the church, you know, the, world, the whole world wide over. Not, not everybody in the world, but everybody born again, you know. Amen. Amen. So, but but uh, when you read through the New Testament, the word church is used about 110 times. Of those 110 times, nine... Uh, it, it, Depending on how you interpret a few verses, some verses not real clear if he's talking about the church worldwide, the body of Christ worldwide, or just the, the local church. But, it, you know, give or take a few, approximately 90 of those 110 times, the word church is used referring to the local church. We know there's the worldwide church, right? We're not, uh, we here tonight are not only members of the, the body of Christ. There's the body of Christ here in the United States, in Mexico, up in Canada, in Australia, China, worldwide, everywhere, all over the world. Amen? amen. Say amen. amen. So we know that's the whole body of Christ. We recognize the whole body of Christ. But notice that most of the time, vast, vast majority, it's safe to say, of the time when the Bible, used, New Testament uses the word church, it's talking about a local church. Now what does that mean? 
I'll tell you what it means. God is big on the local church. And if you're going to be in agreement with Him, you're going to have to be big on the local church. It's not a side issue with you. And here's something, I'll just say it. Can I say what the Holy Ghost tells me to say? I'm not trying to, I don't know anybody that, I'm, that, that this is for, so you know, I'm not here to pick on anybody. I believe that what you hear from other places need not, uh, let's put it this way, what you hear from your pastor that God said I send you to sit under should not be filtered through what you hear on TV. What you hear on TV ought to be filtered through, your, through what he says. Because God didn't send that one on Christian TV. Now, I'm not against Christian TV. I'm going on. You don't, see, don't make me say something I didn't say. Maybe you don't know me. Maybe you think I'm saying something I didn't say. But I'm not against Christian TV. That has a purpose. That has a place. They reach people and get people saved. Thank God for it. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Don't get, don't get quiet on me. I will think it's you that I'm talking to, you know. <laughs> But see now, what I'm saying is, the, the point is, when God called them to go on Christian TV, if they're, if they're not a pastor, or even if they are a pastor, He didn't call them to you, per se, directly. But He did call this pastor and this, this, this Miss Abaro here, He did call them to you directly. They, they might be ministering to the whole body, just a general message God's giving them to minister. And you can be blessed by it. You, you, I'm not preaching against anybody. But my point is, this is a higher calling to you than them on Christian Amen. TV. Amen. Because when, when God anointed them and sent them here, He had you in mind specifically. Amen. Hello? It's a, little like, uh, it's a little like this is home. And you're going to get most of your, you know, if you're a child, well, there's more than, we all grew up as children, we know what this is like. The main place we went to eat was home. We didn't go down to the neighbor's house every time they cooked meals to get something to eat. Right. Right. We had a place to call home, you know, whether our parents were there or not, maybe our grandparents or somebody, right. where that's the main place we went to get something to eat. Yeah. Yeah. And we had other places at times, went to restaurants, maybe went to Uncle Joe's house or somebody else's house. Right. We ate there sometimes, but that wasn't our main place to eat. Can you say amen to that? Yeah. And that's what this is. This is home. You're going to get the diet that the main diet God intended for you to have. You're going to get it right here. Thank God for going out to eat. Thank God there's some other things out there, but that's not your main place to eat. It's a little like taking vitamins. Dr. Dufresne used that illustration. I like it. You know, we, can, we, we, we have our meals we eat, and then sometimes we might get some supplements or something. You know, I'm not telling you to do it or don't do it. You do whatever you want to do, but... Praise God for the covenant of healing. Amen. We don't need to depend on that, but it doesn't mean we don't. We can, how many of you know you can take things and not have, put, have your faith in that? Amen. So, But that's the way other ministries are. They're like supplemental vitamins. But your main meals come from your local church. Yes. Notice there what it says, 1 Corinthians, it says, He set you in the body where it pleased Him. That's where you're going to get the main things you need. Can you say Amen. amen. So with that in mind then, we've got to understand that your, your supply is really where God connected you to. Your connection has a supply. If God said, here's where I want you to connect up, then here's where your main supply is. And that doesn't mean you're not recognizing the rest of the body. You're just saying, just like they said in Acts 4, this is my own company. Hallelujah. This is my own company. Doesn't mean there's not other good pastors in town. I'm sure there are. And you're not, you're not, how many of you know, you don't have to be against anybody to be for something. <laughs> this is where God's called you and I'm, this is where I show up. When church time comes, I show up and I get involved and I help and I bring my supply. Because they're bringing theirs to you and you bring, you bring yours to them, to the ministry here and helping them reach people. Praise God. All right, so this is your main place where you, you get supplied. Now, I don't know if you've ever read this passage, and I won't take time to read it for time's sake tonight, but it's in 1 Samuel chapter number 10. And there's, a, there's, you know, King Saul, God called King Saul to, uh, to be king. He had some things he wanted him to do. Uh, but, uh, you know, he just wasn't, if you read very carefully through the whole story of King Saul, he was not a very spiritual man. He needed help of others, and we all do, you know. One way or another. You know, we don't, all, we don't have it all. Everything that, the, that God has for everybody. We don't have it all. 
You need to recognize that. We're in pride if we say we, have, we don't need anybody else. That's pride. We're saying, we're saying, basically, Jesus, you made a mistake whenever you called somebody else. Amen. <laughs> I'm getting some funny looks. I can look back at you like you're looking at me. <laughs> Amen. They're smiling over here. I'll come over here. Praise God. So, uh, but Saul was not a very spiritual man. He needed the help of other people. So what God told him to do through Samuel, God, uh, go, he said, uh, God wants to use you. He wants you to be king, you know. But he said, uh, <clears throat> here's the sign of this. He said, uh, when you leave from here, there's, you're going to meet a company of prophets. They're going to be coming down off the hill and they're going to be singing and they're going to be having a Holy Ghost meeting, really. They're going to be singing and prophesying. <laughs> But uh, so he said, uh, and then whenever you connect up with them and you meet them, he said, the anointing that's on them is going to get on you and you're going to be turned into another man. Remember that story? And it happened just like Samuel said. He got connected up with that company of prophets. And, uh, and whenever he got in connection, he got in that company. Listen to that. That company, that group of people who were fellowshipping together around the things of God. He got in that group. And when he got in that group, what was on them got on him. Amen. And, what, and he had an impartation from that group to equip him to be what God had called him to be. In other words, he didn't have everything he needed to be what God called him to be by himself. He didn't have it by himself. He had to connect up with a group of people that had something he didn't have. Come on now, I'm preaching better than your amen. So what I'm saying is, and this is true today, uh, the new birth and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, when it comes to what God has for you in the Spirit, those are only introductory offers. God has more for you. There's a group of people somewhere who's got the anointing on them, and they flow together in the Holy Ghost. And when you join up with them, there's going to be impartations off of, from the Holy Ghost that's on them, off of them to get on you. And equip you to be who God called you to be. Hallelujah. And I'm not ashamed to say I need what's on some other people to get on me. I need the rest of the, I need the company God connects me up with. In other words, there's some things you need to finish your course and do what God's called you to do, and you don't have what you, what you need. See, God calls company. Just as much as He calls individuals, He calls companies. Amen. He calls people to come fellowship together, and what's on, what gets on the leadership will be spread through the whole group. And everybody brings their supply, and together, we can do a whole lot more together than we can all apart. We have, a, we have a much more effect on a city by coming together than we ever will out there all scattered around doing our own thing. Amen. I mean, you take any war, they, they, they get organized to go into a, a battle. They don't just say to everybody, they don't just send out, like if somebody attacked the United States, the military wouldn't send out an email and said, everybody grab a gun and start shooting somewhere. No, no, they have it, they have a thing structured. They have things, they have training, they have, they have lessons. They, I mean, they, they get ready for things. And somebody's in charge of companies and troops and, you know, you got generals, you got all these people in charge of different, and that's the way the body of Christ is. Whether these people out there that say they don't believe in organized Christianity want to believe it or not, God's a, a, an organized God. Amen. We don't get much done out there just doing, everybody just kind of doing their own thing. Yeah. You know, if I'm called to do something, but, uh, but I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm doing something else, well then I'm, I'm causing problems in two areas. Number one, I'm not bringing my supply that God intended me to bring to the body of Christ. And number two, I'm in the way of somebody else that God told them to do what I'm over here getting in the way doing. Amen. If I told them to come here and do what they're doing here, I'd be wrong to come here and say, you know what, I sense the anointing on what you're doing. I think I'm going to move to Yuma and I'm going to start a charter school and I'm going to do this. And I'm, No, I don't need to, just because I sense the anointing on him to do it doesn't mean I need to get in on that. No, that's his thing. If I come here and try to do that, I get in the way of what God's trying to do through him. My goodness, I'm glad I came tonight. <laughs> now, just because I'm not anointed to do what he's called to do doesn't mean I'm some lesser one in the body of Christ. I just, I just bloom where I'm planted and I just bring my supply where I'm planted. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, uh, you know, we, we've got to learn that and, and, uh, and, and, and just be who we are. Like, but, so jump in and, and let what God's got on this company get on you. Hallelujah. God anoints companies just like He anoints individuals. And I'll tell you, that's one thing God's doing today. He's raising up strong local churches. And teaching them the flow of the Holy Ghost. So there's some things God's called you to do. And you say, well, God, how on earth am I going to do that? And he's going to say, I'll tell you what to do. He said, go down there in the middle and and, and join up with that group right there. For example, if this is your church, join up with that church. And And if you do that, you'll get impartations from the leadership. First of all, the pastor. And uh, it'll get on you and you'll be equipped to do. Yeah, that's right. So basically Saul was somebody, he couldn't do what God, he didn't have the equipment to do what God called him to do. So God said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go jump in the middle of some of those Holy Ghost people over there. Yeah. Just join up with them. If they're doing it, you do it. Yeah. Hallelujah. So that's what God calls you to do. And somebody said, well, that's just not my personality whenever they run the aisles and they do that. Wait, 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 wait. Did it please the Lord for you to come here? Maybe it's some things because of your personality that he sent you here. Because to do what you're called to do, your personality is hindering it. So he wants to get you out. I used that on the Lord one time. There was a Holy Ghost meeting going on in a group down there at Bible school where God sent me. A Holy Ghost moving going on. And I was sitting there. I wasn't getting in. And the Lord said to me in my heart, I'm watching everybody yield to the Holy Ghost. And I'm just kind of stuck up that night, you know. And, and, and the Lord said, and the Lord said, I'm sitting there, and the Lord said, is this my spirit? I said, yeah, Lord, I know the Holy Ghost. I know this is the Holy Ghost. He said, then why aren't you getting in? I said, I don't know why I said it. I really don't know why I said it. Some things you just say stupid things. How many of you ever said something stupid? <laughs> I said to the Lord, I said, it's just not my personality. And you know what he said to me? And if you knew my upbringing, you know he hit me a low blow, but you know it was right. He said this back to me. He's because I grew up in a denominational church that God was depressed, so we all got in church and we got depressed. I mean, that's what we thought. You know, not that that's true, but that's what we thought. <laughs> we all quiet in church, and if you raised your hands because you needed to go to the bathroom or something, you know. And yet if you say amen, everybody jump. Like, what, 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 what? Quiet down. Pipe down back there. Don't get too excited. So my personality was formed, and this is what he says. I said, that's not my personality. He said, yeah. And this is, I mean, he jarred me when he said it. It wasn't just my conscience. It was the voice of the Holy Ghost on the inside. He said authoritative. He said, yeah, and your personality was basically formed by unbelief. I did that too. I went, oh, Lord, you hit me a low blow. And when he said it, I started thinking. I thought, oh, my goodness, you know, he's right. So he was trying to get me out of some things that were hindering me. You ask my wife, when we first, she first met me, she was really concerned because how on earth is God going, to use, God's going to use him? God told me I'm going to marry a preacher. How on earth is God going to use him? I'm so backwards and introverted, didn't, didn't like people. How many of you know if you're going to be in the ministry, it'd be helpful if you like people? <laughs> I, I mean, I was introverted. I'd rather, go, I'd rather go run the woods with my dog than be around people, you know. If I had it my way, I'd have grown, gone out in the woods and lived like Grizzly Adams, you know, grow a beard and drink branch water and just kill squirrels to eat, you know. <laughs> but see, there were some things needed to change. I said there were some things needed to change. Just a 1%, is there any, maybe just a 1% chance of anything, maybe just a little thing, maybe just a one little percent of something needs to change in you. Anything? Anything? Possibly. Possibly, maybe, maybe a little more than 1%. <laughs> well, that's why God's got you in the middle of this Holy Ghost group. Because He knows the way you are. You're not going to get done what He's called you to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, <laughs> so did you get it? I said, in the kingdom of God, the new birth, because at at the new birth, the Holy Ghost comes on the inside of you, doesn't he? At the new birth and the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the kingdom of God, those are only introductory offers. There's more for you in the Holy Ghost. And that's going to happen as you get around this company of believers. 
Now, I don't mean that you can't be refilled in your own private prayer time, like she was preaching last night, edifying yourself. But, that, but it says we're to do that in private, and then it says in the, in the other book of Colossians, we're to do it in public, too. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, the word's good, isn't it? So the, it's important that you have your own company. Now, uh, it could be le- life or death where you go to church. I know sometimes people hear that and they say, well, that doesn't sound right. Well, let me ask you a question. You know, if a place you go to church, they, they preach that, that, you know, God puts sickness on you to teach you something. You're going to get sick there, folks. And whenever it's on you, you don't want to resist God, so you just let it run its course. I said, it could be life or death where you go to church. You know, impartations are made by associations. I mean, that's one way impartations are made, by associations. God wants you to be associated with people that have something on them that that you need. Praise God. So it could be life or death. Now, the place where your supply is, 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 uh, is gonna, that's, that's where your supply is going to flow to the fullest. You understand that uh, you want the fullness of what God has for you. I, I should say, I hope you want the fullness of what God has for you. Amen. So, I would say this, protect these relationships more than you protect any relationship. In other words, these divine connections. Those divine connections are more important than just natural connections. Not trying, I'm not telling you to on, just on purpose for no reason at all break natural connections with natural relationships. But I'm just simply saying, if, if somebody forces the issue and says it's me or that church down there, how many of you know that happens sometimes? You have to choose between me or that church down there. And you're just going to have to look at them with all the love in your heart that you can muster. And you're going to have to say, don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. Because you're asking me to choose against what Jesus said is mine. I, 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 don't make me choose between Jesus and you. Don't do that to yourself. Come on now. See, we have to know that Jesus said there's going to be persecutions come for certain things. But he said, if you don't love me more than them, you're not worthy of me. <laughs> yeah, we say, uh, we talk about how much we love Jesus until somebody says, well, I don't want you to go down there to that church where God puts you. Yeah, right. Then you really find out if you do love Jesus or not. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, in Mark 6, we, we didn't look at this, uh, we looked at the, another story, but in Mark 6, you'll remember this story, where Jesus went to a, a town there, and he could there do no mighty work, and his, his own hometown is what it was, could there do no mighty work. And you remember uh, that uh, there, was, there was really a spirit of unbelief there. And, he, and uh, because he could there do no mighty work, he laid his hand on a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled, the Bible said, because of their unbelief. So uh, what, what he's saying there is, the spirit of unbelief that permeated that whole town, there are people there that could have, should have, and would have been healed if they had not been living in that town. Because it didn't say Jesus could do no mighty work. He said He could there do no mighty work. In other words, the atmosphere created in that town hindered Him from, from really doing what He wanted to do. He could there do no mighty work. He only healed a few people of minor ailments, the Greek says. So what that's telling us is that, that there is, if those people in that town had been living in a different town Jesus came, and there are people there that could have, should have, and would have gotten healed or received something that they didn't because they lived in that town. Am I adding something to that? No, he could there, there, could there do no mighty work. But he went over to Capernaum and did all kinds of mighty works. Isn't that right? So, the, uh, in other words, it's important who you're in the middle of. If you're in a place where Jesus can't move, somebody said, well, he can do anything. No, apparently from that verse, he can't do anything. He won't go against what people want. If people don't want to receive, you know, there are churches that the Holy Ghost is not allowed to move in. And you can't go there and get everything Jesus wants to do for you. I'm not preaching against somebody. I'm preaching for something. Amen. So you need to protect these relationships. and Surround yourself with the people that will help you receive, not people that will keep you from receiving. 
We used to minister in healing school, and one of the things we started doing was contacting, because they would come to Tulsa to receive, and then they would leave, because they didn't live there, they just come for temporary, then they'd leave and go home. And after a period of a month or so, we'd call them and just encourage them and so forth. And it, it happened over and over and over again. I, and you, you hate to see it, you know, but uh, they'd go back to a place where they didn't preach the word that God got them healed up here at where, where they got healed and didn't believe in that. They'd go back to a place that doesn't believe in that and they'd lose it. Hello? You know, there's three different times, uh, three or four, I think three of them I'm thinking of right now, Jesus had to take somebody outside the town to get them healed. And in one or two cases, he said, don't go back in there and tell anybody what happened. Because you know what will happen? They'll talk you out of it. They'll get you back in unbelief and you'll lose it. So it's important where you go to church. It's important who you hang out with. It's important. You need people to encourage you in faith, not people that take something out of you. Every time, every time you're with them, they take something out of your faith. You need somebody to put something into your faith. That tells you where it is you're to be and where you're to go to church. Galatians 6.10 talks about the household of faith. Don't go to a household of unbelief. Go to a household of faith. Protect yourself. Amen. Spend time with those that create an atmosphere of faith and that will assist you in faith. Amen. Not where there's a communion of unbelief. Yes, amen. <laughs> you know, out there in the world, there's just a lot of unbelief flowing. Yes. And that's gotten in a lot of churches sometimes. Yes. They'll pull you down. And uh, you, in order to stand in faith against the enemy, you, you have enough coming against you, just the enemy coming against you. You don't need all the, the unbelief of others around you coming against you. I mean, you know, <laughs> man, tell your neighbor this is good preaching whether you know it or not. Now, uh, and also in that town, the reason that they could not, or excuse me, that Jesus could there do no mighty work is because they saw him in the natural rather than who he was in the spirit. Remember, he said, we know who he is. He's Joseph's son, remember? And, you know, they basically were saying, well, he grew, up with, he grew up with my son Joshua over here, or my son Joaz, or, you know, he played sand, in the sandbox with my children. They, they just knew him naturally. Remember that? They said uh, they just knew who he was in the flesh. So you need to go to a place where there's a spirit of honor for your leadership, yeah. not a spirit of division and a spirit of unbelief. Yeah, you say, well, why do we have to give them a birthday present? Oh, well, because of honor, that's why. Right. I think I just hit something right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I grew up on the farm. We, we had to plow the fields, and every now and then, of course, years later, they got those, those plow blades that whenever you hit a rock, it, would just, it was spring-loaded. It would just flip up and let the rock go, you know. But before we got those, they were just hard-mounted onto the, to the plow. You hit a rock, and that tractor would just go, and you just ain't going nowhere. Every now and then that happens whenever I'm preaching, you know. <laughs> going along real good, you say something, everybody goes, don't like that. I think I just hit one of those rocks right there. How about we just camp on it and blow it out with dynamite before we go? That'd be all right. See, because I believe God doesn't just... I don't, now listen to me. I'm not, I'm not preaching against the fellowship of the saints because that's part of what God brings us into. When He brings us into a family, He wants us to be in fellowship with the whole family. But that's just a side benefit of the main reason God brings you to the place He brings you. He doesn't bring you to the place He brings you for the fellowship of the sheep. He brings you for the feeding of the pastor. Amen. The fellowship of the sheep is just an extra blessing on top of it. And we're to stay in fellowship Amen. with the sheep. Not preaching against that. You, I hope you understand what I'm saying. But the main connection he's bringing you to a place about is where you're going to get fed because of the anointing on your pastors. Amen. So before we go, before we finish up, let's put it that way. I want to magnify the pastoral office a little bit. Paul said, I magnify my office. You ever read that? I want to magnify that pastoral office. Amen. Because as important as the rest of it is in the fellowship of the church, the main reason God sends you to a place is to get you your pastor. Yes. Why? Because of Mark, uh, Matthew 9. Go over to Matthew 9 here. Anybody still getting anything out of this? Yes. <clears throat> Notice what it says. We could spend four whole services on, well, more than that, on the office of the pastor. And uh, because you remember, we're here in Matthew 9, but you remember... The 10th chapter, he that receives a prophet in the, pro in the name of a prophet has a prophet's reward. Yes. Yeah. Well, would that be true? Because in the Old Testament they just had prophets. But in the New Testament we have the five-fold ministry. 
That would be true about all five of those fivefold ministry, wouldn't it? I believe it. I believe there's a prophet's reward in the New Testament, just like the Old Testament. I believe there's an apostle's reward. I believe there's a, a reward for an evangelist, you know, receiving evangelists and all those. But, but let's talk about the pastor's office. There's a reward for receiving the pastor's office. Well, a number of things you could talk about that reward. What is that reward? Well, the primary reward of receiving the pastor's office is having that anointing work for you. The pastor's anointing work for you. Amen. That's the reward. <laughs> because whatever you honor, you tend to attract to yourself. Whatever you fail to honor, you tend to lose whether it's your marriage, your money, your body, or, or your pastors. That's the truth. You tend to lose what you dishonor. You tend to draw to yourself what you honor. So the pastor's office, what is the, the uh, pastor's reward? Notice here in Matthew, Matthew 9, verse 36 through 38, He saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. So Jesus is seeing the... Uh, the, the masses of people, and he said they need a shepherd. So he said unto the disciples, The harvest is plenteous, tr truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he'll send forth laborers into his harvest. And the context is a pastor. So uh, not, not that the other laborers aren't necessary. He said all those laborers are necessary, but the context is mainly pastors. We need pastors. You need a pastor more than you need all the other ones. Yeah. In fact, the other ones, to be honest with you, uh, you should be connecting with the other ones, mainly the ones God sends to your, your local church. Amen. You should be feeding on your pastor's materials, your pastor's wife, I'm sure they both teach and preach, but on their materials more than anybody, and second of all, whoever they're having in here. Come on. Amen. Then after that, yeah, amen, I said after that, somebody else that might seem to feed you or something. If you're not getting anything out of your pastor's ministry, one or two things is wrong. Number one, you're in the wrong place. Or number two, you're not properly honoring. I've had people that got fed for years and then they come up, they say something to somebody in the church. I'm just not being fed here anymore. I thought, that's funny, I'm feeding the same thing I always have been feeding since they've been here. It wasn't me that stopped feeding, it was them that stopped eating. Well, their heart used to be open and now it's all closed up because they let something get in. Let some dishonor, let some gossip get in, some dishonor get in, some offense get in. Did you hear what the Holy Ghost said through my wife last night? The number one deception in these last days is offense, for getting people disconnected from your supply. Amen. I, I, I caught that. That's, that's, the Bible says in, in Matthew 9, no, Matthew 24, he said there'll be many offended in the last days. Well, we're, we're going to not let that happen. You notice he said, here's, here's what belongs to us if we don't have a pastor. Same Greek word translated, shepherds translated pastor. We will faint and be scattered. Spiritually, we'll faint. And uh, second of all, we'll be scattered. I'm thoroughly convinced that there's people that used to come to my church. Now, you understand, I don't believe I'm the only one in our city. Don't misunderstand me or I'm the only one that preaches anything that the people can get fed on. But, I, but, but they themselves said, not me telling them to say this, they themselves said, God sent us here, Pastor. This is our church. We're going to stay put, so forth and so on. But for some reason or another, they got separated. And after they got separated, things start happening. Uh, like their family starts falling apart. Their marriage starts falling apart. I've seen people, they lose their husband or their wife. You know, I'm not trying to push this on. I'm not glad in any, I'm not rejoicing in any of it. Don't misunderstand me. That's not my heart. I'm just simply saying we have to recognize these things happen. See, they open the door to the, to the enemy to scatter them. Scatter their health, scatter their money, scatter their kids. Amen. Give your children the habit of being in church and you'll do more for them than any other thing you do. Give them the habit of being, where, see, when you, you give them the habit of being in church, you give them the habit of being where God can get through to them. Amen. So, uh, so uh, he said here they're scattered. That could be a lot of different things could scatter. I've seen people go scatterbrained. <laughs> Squirrely in their head. They, they used to just be love the people of God, love church, love everything. But they let some offense get in, they get disconnected. And you meet them on the street and you don't even recognize them. Because they're deranged in their head, they're just not right. So the devil will scatter people. That, that's what belongs to people that don't have a pastor. Hello? I don't want that. 
Now, what that means is, is the pastoral ministry, if you'll sit under it and properly receive it. Of course, you know, a lot of us, we're preaching to the choir here tonight. You know what that means? A lot of us might be doing that, but let's just go, keep on. Let's just, let's just feed our faith here tonight. Uh, but uh, so the opposite is true. If, if uh, not having a pastor, the enemy can scatter things in your life. Then what would having a pastor be? So one of, the, one of the rewards, remember the prophet's reward, the pastor's reward, there's different rewards. One of the rewards of staying with your pastor is you'll start gathering up the blessings of God. Amen. Rather than everything be scattered. Your kids be scattered, your money scattered, everything's scattered. You'll start gathering up those things that the enemy was scattering. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now go over to 1 Thessalonians. We got, we got so much we could say, we're running out of time. Go to 1 Thessalonians 3 here. Uh, we see in the first, first Thessalonians 3, verse number 10, Paul said this, Night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. See your face and perfect what's lacking in your faith. Now, <clears throat> let me ask you a question. Paul was basically saying, I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to getting there. If you, if you read the second chapter up there in verse number 18, he said he kept trying to get there and Satan was hindering him. So he said, I want to get there and I'm going to get there. Because <laughs> Paul's not a man, Satan might try to hinder him, but he's not, not going to let him stop him. He's going to get there. But he said, I want to get there. And he said, because when I get there, when I see your face, I'll be able to perfect what's lacking in your faith. Now, it's not, it's not a criticism that we're lacking in faith in an area, because all of us, None of us have been completely perfected in faith yet. All of us need some things added to our faith. And so Paul was saying, I want to get there and perfect what's lacking in your faith. Let me ask you a question. He's writing this letter to them, which got put into the canon of Scripture, so it is Scripture, and it feeds their faith, doesn't it? Right? So he wrote this letter to them. They could read this letter, and it would feed their faith. I'm not adding something to the Word. That's right, right? So he sent this to them, and it fed their faith. Now, if that be the case, because people say, all I need is Jesus, just I'll get, go in my room in my, with my Bible, and I'm not, I'm not preaching against that. Don't misunderstand me at all. We all have our personal relationship with Jesus. God talks to us all individually. We don't have to go to church to God and talk to us. God will talk to us individually, won't he? He lives on the inside of us, Amen. doesn't he? He goes home with us. He goes to the job with us. Hallelujah. I'm not preaching that that's not true. Don't make me say something I'm not saying here. I'm just simply saying there's some things that God's not going to talk to you about in that private time he, because He wants you to go to church and get it. Some things, not everything. You know? You know as well as I do that we learn better by somebody else who knows more than we do. And it takes us longer to learn it on our own than it does to sit under somebody else who knows it. People say, I can be a good Christian and, and not go to church. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, how, how much better is it to go to church? Like, let's take the school here, for example. How much better can a student learn math here or science here or whatever else here by going to school than they can at home? I mean, maybe, maybe homeschooling would work at home or somebody's teaching, but still somebody's teaching them there. That's what I'm saying. Somebody else is standing up saying, now here's how math works. Right? I'm almost done. I know you're getting a little, you know, or we can only receive as much as our seat can endure. <laughs> but you're getting this. See, we can learn better coming to a school like this than we can at home, just trying to figure it out ourselves. Ah, I need some help. Isn't that right? So that's the way it is with spiritual things. I don't know why we tend to think out there in the natural to, that to, uh, to be a doctor, you need to go get an education for that. To be a lawyer, you need to get an education for that. But to be spiritual, you don't need anybody else to help you be, get an education on that. What on earth are we thinking? That's not clear thinking, that's for sure. So Paul said, I, want, I sent you this letter. Of course, you can feed your faith with that. But he still said, there's some more things I can do whenever I'm there just face to face with you. Can you say amen? amen? Now, I'll tell you why. Because this is, this is a scriptural thing God put into place. I, I could give you some examples. Like, for example, uh, uh, well, let me, let me tell you why Paul said this, and I'll give you the examples of it. Because there's something about your pastor is, has an anointing and his wife. I'm talking about both of them when I say that. They have 
something on their life that when they get up here under that anointing and they see your face, yeah. sometimes whenever you see somebody, it's not until you see their face that something starts stirring on the inside. Have you ever had that happen? That's a silly question. You probably have, I mean, more often than not. <laughs> Amen. When you see them, there's something starts stirring inside. Now somebody said, well, I don't know if that has to be that way though. Well, let me ask you a question. Remember in Jesus' ministry, over and over again, it says He saw the multitude and He was moved with compassion and the Holy Ghost started flow, flowing whenever, the, whenever He saw and was moved. Isn't that right? And then we in the Old Testament, we've got Samuel going down to Jesse's house to find David the king. He didn't know who he was at the time, but he's looking for David. And he kept saying, and Samuel said, okay, where's your boys here? And he, Jesse kept bringing the boys by, and God kept saying, it's not him, not him. But God wouldn't speak to him about who it was. He just kept telling him who it wasn't. And he never would say who it wasn't until they stood right in front of him. Well, why couldn't God just tell Sam, uh, 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 Samuel, the prophet, over there where he was in prayer whenever he said go down there to Jesse's house, why couldn't God just have gone ahead and said it's David? His name's David. He's a little runt of a kid. He's out there watching the sheep. Don't even go, don't go through the rest of them. It's David. Why couldn't God just do that? Well, he could have if he'd have wanted to. But he didn't want to. And that's the way it is with local church. God could just tell you everything you need, to, need at home without you going to church. But He just doesn't want to. I said He just doesn't want to. Come on now, I'm preaching good. There's something about God said, I want you to connect up with this man, this woman of God. And when you stand and they see your face, I'll move on them and stir something in them and get them to say something that you needed because whenever they saw your face, something started stirring in the Holy Ghost on the inside Amen. and God the Holy Ghost took them a direction and ministered to your need because they saw your face. Amen. Now, in uh, 1 Peter 5, I'm almost done. We're wrapping this up. We, we got about 10% out tonight. <laughs> what we could have said, should have said maybe. But you know 1 Peter 5. Notice what it says here. Praise God. A little different tonight, but we need this. We're reading here in the fifth chapter, 1 Peter chapter 5, and then verse number uh, 8 and 9. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in what? The faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In other words, everybody goes through those things. So he said, the enemy, the way you're going to resist the enemy is be with faith. You can't say, I've been a good Christian. I love God. Well, bluebirds love the Lord, but... <laughs> Isn't that right? I mean, that's a good thing to love. You, you, you don't misunderstand me. It's a good thing to love God. It'll help you a whole lot. <laughs> but my point is, whenever the devil's around, you're going to have to resist him in faith. Now... All right, so when it says, put, put those three verses together. Put together what Jesus said, uh, sheep are scattered without a shepherd. Put that with what Paul said. He said there, I long to see your face and perfect what's lacking in your faith. With what Peter said, he said, you're going to have to stand against the enemy by faith. The word scattered in Matthew 9 there, it says sheep are scattered. It, lit, it doesn't mean they just wander off. Sheep do do that. They do wander off. But that's not what that word means in the Greek. It says the sheep are scattered. The Greek says they're chased as, as by a predator. So this is the enemy coming and trying to scatter them, scatter their marriage, scatter their finances, all those things, all the blessings of God. He's just wanting to get it out of their life and scatter them. All right. Well, how do you resist the enemy? Peter said you're going to have to stand against him by faith. So how do you connect that to the local church? Well, the reason you're going to gather up the blessings of God by connecting right to your no local church is not because that the, 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 the carpet's beautiful, the singing's wonderful, and the pastors, although this is all true, the pastors are good looking and everything like that. Or they have great management skills or leadership abilities. All those things help, of course. You need that to be pastor, but that's not the point. The point is because of the anointing on them to see your face and speak into your faith to give you what your faith needs to stand against the enemy. And that's why your life isn't scattered. That's why you need a local church. 
I said, that's why you need a local church. And guess what? There's something, sometimes Christians, they say, well, I just, I, I, they think it's a faith problem. I just need to get stronger in faith. It's whenever, according to what Paul said there, it's not as much a faith problem as it is a face problem. What do I mean by that? The man of God who's anointed to help you feed your faith never sees your face. All right, Pastor, we're leaving now. They, they, they love that, didn't they? See, you're here. Don't get upset because I said that. You're here, so I'm not, you know. If you get quiet, I mean. <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't come to church just to do our religious duty. We come here to get what we need to stand against the enemy. He's trying to scatter all the blessings of God. Scatter our kids, scatter our brains, scatter everything. <laughs> Amen. You know, Christians ought to be the most sound-minded people, the most victorious people on the planet. But see, sometimes Christians say, well, I don't have enough faith. Well, that's just because they don't, have, they, they don't show, show their face. Well, they say, well, I can just sit home and watch Christian TV. Well, guess what? You can see their face, but they can't see your face. I can just read good Christian books. You can't see their face. There's something about the office of the pastor, and it works in other ministries too, but mainly it's the pastor's office. They see your face, and they can see things on your face that nobody else sees. Everybody else might just see you like you normally look, but, they, but under the anointing that they stand in, they're anointed to see something on your face to, that, that, that you need, and they'll speak into it. They might not always say, Thus saith the Lord, I'm talking to you right now, or point you out. They might just go that direction because the Holy Ghost has shown them that there's people here that need that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So, praise God for the pastor's office. Did you get anything out of the Word tonight? Oh, thank God for the Word. So guard this relationship more than you guard any other relationship. Well, let me say divine connections. Divide, guard those more than you guard any other. Hallelujah. You know as well as I do that when the enemy wants to uh, harm your life, he sends somebody. He sends somebody that will yield to him. Isn't that right? And when God wants to bless your life, he does this, he, the enemy got that from God. Because God, whenever he wants to bless your life, he sends somebody to bless you. You ever notice how many of your blessings are connected to another person that God brought into your life? Right. Now, I don't mean, don't misunderstand, that doesn't mean God can't bless you with a lot of things just on your own. But you're not going to have near what you should have without being connected to the body where that joint supplies. Yeah. Hallelujah. But, but see, we're sheep, so we, we want that. We want to be connected up. We don't want to be lone rangers. Right. Amen. Amen. Do you? Everybody look, look, say, I, no, 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 no. Everybody go, back. Yeah, that's who we are. I'm a sheep. See, ministers need pastors. I know uh, Pastor Nancy and Dr. Dufresne said they don't have anybody in their pulpit preaching who don't have a pastor. I like that. And I adopted that. Actually, whenever I went to the, whenever I went to pastor in Cedar Rapids, <clears throat> about almost, well, when God spoke to me, it was over 11 years ago now. He said, don't have anybody, when you go there, he said, don't have anybody in your pulpit that has either not pastored or that uh, doesn't have that heart and doesn't have a pastor. So I just confirmed what doctor said when we got connected up with doctor. So we don't have somebody in our pulpit that doesn't have a pastor. Because they'll spread something in, that, in our church. You know. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, thank God for the word tonight. We love the word. We're, we're doers of the word. God connected us where it pleased Him, and we're pleased with what, it, what, what He's pleased with. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. Lift up your hands and just give Him praise for the, for the things that are coming to you through the Word tonight. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We love you tonight. We thank you for how you've set things up to help us. We thank you, Father, for the ministry of the office of pastor. We thank you, Father, for these pastors that you've set in this place. We thank you lives are different from, from what they would be here tonight because of the anointing that these pastors have chosen to yield to and give themselves to. We receive them in the place that you've placed them in our lives, dear Father. And we give you the praise. 
Hallelujah. That you were thinking of us when you sent us a pastor. You had us in mind. You didn't have them in mind when you anointed them. You had us in mind when you anointed them. So we thank you for them. We receive them in the place that they stand. And we allow them to operate in that office without being a hindrance, without being unwilling to respond to it, Father. We respond to this office that you've set here. We give you praise for it. We thank you because of that our lives will begin to gather up more and more and more of the blessings of God. Hallelujah. We thank you things are coming into place. Things, Yes, Lord, divine order is coming into place. Things that otherwise would not be in place are being put in place. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Can you say amen? Say amen out loud. Amen, amen. amen. Praise God. I was thinking... And there, whenever I was praying, I was thinking of that Ephesians 4 there. He said, in the church, first apostles, prophets, and he lists all of them, got down to pastors and teachers. And then he said, for the perfecting of the saints. All those fivefold ministry are part of perfecting us. Or, or, that means maturing us. But the Greek says perfecting means maturing, but it also means right ordering or arrangement. And the Amplified even adds equipping. So that's what perfecting. It means maturing. Right ordering or arrangement, and then equipping. So whenever we have, you know, all these ministries do that, but this pastoral office is the main one, because you're going to sit under his ministry more than any other, you know. But uh, whenever that takes place, then we're going to grow up spiritually. And as a result of growing up spiritually, our life will come into order. You ever walked up to a soda machine or maybe a, uh, a vending machine where you're looking for a snack or something, and, and you walked up to put some quarters or something in it and it says out of order. Somebody put a tag on it and says out of order. What's that mean? It's not functioning the way it should function. You know, there's a lot of that going around in our society today. People say, that's a dysfunctional person or that's a dysfunctional home or I grew up in a dysfunctional family. A lot of that. Well, sometimes when people say that to me, I say, well, welcome to the human race without Jesus. You know, I mean, without Jesus, we're dysfunctional. <laughs> But not just without Jesus, according to what he said there, without these ministry offices in our, in our lives. In other words, God's not going to be able to get out of us what he intended to get out of us. Just like we won't get out of that soda machine what we intended to get out of it. If it's not functional. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The evangelist goes and brings them in, but, but the harvest is not truly harvest until it's in the barn. And the local church is the barn. That's where God is able to equip them to do something and be valuable to His work. Now, He loves them before they even might join up to the church, but they're valuable to His work whenever they get pastored and, you know, brought up under these ministries. Amen? Amen. And they become functional. Tell your neighbor we want to be functional. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, come, if you need healing tonight, we said we were going to lay hands on the sick, so we're going to do that. Then just make your way up and uh, make a form a line up here. We'll lay hands on you. Back in 1990, in August of 1990, the Lord spoke to me and said, I've given to you a, heal a ministry of healing is the way he said it. And from that moment on, I began to notice an anointing flowing through our hands and then others, other seasoned ministers confirmed it. <clears throat> but we've seen many, many people healed and we're just going to let God be God. I'm not the healer. Say out loud, Jesus is the healer. But how many of you know he does choose to use men and women today? So I'm just going to be a, I'm just going to get one hand on Jesus tonight and get my other hand on you and let that power flow through me. Praise the Lord. Can we have a little music while we're laying hands on the people? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, out in the congregation, you can help us. If you would, just stretch out your hand towards these and pray in the Spirit or pray a prayer of agreement or something. Let's all join our faith with them. Like we said earlier, we're, we're here to help one another in faith, aren't we? Amen. So let's be a family and assist one another here tonight. Father, we thank you for each one that has come to you tonight. They haven't come to a man, they've come to you. And they reach up to you out of their heart to receive what you have for them. We make ourselves a vessel. We ask you to make us a blessing tonight with that anointing you put on our lives. In Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. Now we lay hands on you and minister God's power to you. In the name of Jesus, we say be healed. And we command sickness to leave your body. In Jesus' name. In Jesus, there it goes. There it goes right into you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Be healed. In Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus, oh, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Master Kichi, be healed in Jesus' name. There it goes. It just started going into you. Reach up your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Oh, there it goes again. Just shot out of me. <laughs> yeah, just say, I receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name name. Thank you. There it went right, right into you. In the name of Jesus. 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 What have you been dealing with? Back. Back? Did you hurt it or is it years ago? In the name of Jesus. I lay my hands on you and I command that back to be healed. There it goes. My, my. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Jesus name. In Jesus name. We lay hands on you. We release God's power in Jesus' name. In Je there it goes, right into you. In Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, be healed, sir, by the power of God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Have you come for healing? Yes. All right. In the name of Jesus. Just receive that, sir. It went right into you. In the name of Jesus. In the, oh, shit. There, there it went. There it went. Went right into you, honey. Right into you. Be healed. In Jesus' name. Be healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name, in Jesus' name, command the healing power to go into this young man's body. In Jesus' name, in, oh, there it went, there it went. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, in your wrist. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In Jesus' name, master kishti, huh? In the name of Jesus. Oh, shaka yenta brasa siki. Boy, these young people are receiving. In Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah. Let's just thank Him for it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Master kich the kich the kutukula and to frufasia. Oh, shakute kiche 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 kiche. Hallelujah. Okay, sure. Pastor said that the ushers weren't able to get in on what was, what was happening last night. So if you're an usher, he wants you to come on up. <clears throat> he wants he he loves you. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Mashi tu ke shi pe kushta e prom sonte brasta stiste kicho kuta kishishi. In the name, the name, the name. Thank you for blessing, Father. Thank you for your blessing on my friend. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Be blessed. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Be blessed. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Praise God. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Um, who here, I don't know if it's one of the gentlemen I'm laying hands on or if maybe somebody in the congregation. Oh, I just remembered now somebody, actually. See, it came to my spirit before it came to my mind. Where's that young man? Well, actually, that might not be the man. Anyway, uh, somebody here is either in the car business or you want to get in the car business. I mean selling cars. That's, it has something to do with re retail car, cars. Who is that? Is there anybody here? Huh? <clears throat> I know you were. That came to my mind after it came to my spirit. Unless you're wanting to get in or you got out. <laughs> uh, who is that though? Somebody. Huh? Who? You, sir? Okay, come on up and stand in this line. Praise the Lord. 
It's interesting because were you standing over here somewhere? Where were you whenever I called that out? You were standing right here. See, that happens over and over in my life. As I get close to somebody and a word of knowledge will come, and it'll be somebody I'm close to. See, get close to your pastor here. In the name of Jesus, be blessed in Jesus' name. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Now, what are you wanting to get into? Does he speak English? Do you, are you wanting to get into it or are you in it now? He wants to get into it. All right. In the name of Jesus. You ready to claim that as a job? Okay. Raise up your hands. Say to Jesus, I receive. In the name of Jesus, I say the anointing goes into him now to sell cars and to get into this industry. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it, Father. We thank you for all the skill that he needs, impartations of, of uh, ability, impartations of wisdom, and favor for him in the name of Jesus. Now, that angel that's standing here, go. Go and bring him that position in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I believe we can give God a shout and thank Him for what we've received tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my, my, my. That angel's here still for somebody else. Somebody else. If there's something you need financially, get up here real quickly. Get up here real quickly. There's angels here for, for help, to help bring some money in tonight. <laughs> I thought that was it, but there's still, I kept saying there's, there's more, there's more, there's more. You need some finances. We're going to commission the angels. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Shukulun. Now those angels that are here, we, we call them to come and assist these and, and bring the money in. And bring the money in. In Jesus' name. To bring the money in. Now those of you that ha I'm laying hands on, stay up here for a moment because we're going to do something. Bring the money in. The angels are here to bring the money in. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the ministry of angels in all of these lives. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, let's do this. Your angels are here. <laughs> I'm telling you, <clears throat> I don't make these things up. You, you get, you get, uh, you get uh, eventually found out to be a fraud if you start making stuff up. How many of you know what I'm talking about? So, but I'm telling you, there's angels here to bring things in to people. Now, you, you have to be obedient to the word for this to work. But I want those of you that are in the line, I want you to, you came up here for a certain reason, so I want you to get that in your mind, what that is that you need. If it's a job or if it's some rent money or if it's whatever it is. So you need some sort of finances. I want you to get that in your mind, what that is right now, all right? And then, now everybody got it? Yes. Everybody hold your hand up if you got it. Now, say this out loud while your hands are raised. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that I am the, a child of God and that I am blood bought and I am an heir of salvation. And the angels are ministering spirits to send, that are sent forth to minister for me who am an heir of salvation. Thank you for it, Lord. This is part of my inheritance that they work for me and they assist me. So right now, I commission the ones that have come into this service to assist me in my finances. I say to you, ministering spirits, go, cause the money to come. I release you now. Satan, you take your hands off of my money. I claim what I need. Now say it out loud to God right now, whatever it is. I claim that, I claim that money. I claim that job. Say, angels, go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. 
God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now from now on. Now, oh, mama, mama, shike, eka toto luke, eh, rokoko poseke tekeche. Hearken, hearkening, hearkening, hushokoya. From now on, you just say, thank God, ministering spirits are bringing the money in. When you go to bed tonight, that's what you say. The angels are working, they're bringing the money in. Or the job, or whatever. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glad I came tonight. <laughs> We're going to hear some testimonies out of this. Healing testimonies. Praise God. Glory be to God. Amen, amen, amen. There's more going on there. <laughs> Praise God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yea, and the Lord was saying to you that this is the time and a moment and a word for you. And yea, that word is going to go in. It's going to make changes if you'll obey. And it'll rearrange and reorder and re-guide your life and the life of your family. But somebody has to obey. If you receive it and take it tonight, it'll change you and everyone around you. The blessing on you forever. Hey, I'm a son today. Whoa. Hallelujah. Here she goes. Hallelujah. 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 What a word. What a word. What a word. You know, as Pastor Jay was preaching, I want to just make something I felt just a little clarifying. It wasn't my whole life that I understood that attending a church didn't make you have a pastor. A pastor is that person that he's talking about, that you understand the office, you honor the office, you yield to the office, you submit yourself to the office. And it's preferably better to have one. Amen. You got to understand where you're supposed to be and get there. Amen. And so there's some people in this church that Pastor Mario and I have been dealing with that have been attending here for quite a while, but they don't come to us when they have issues in their lives that they need direction. They're not financially going where they should be going. They're not moving where they should be. And it's not everybody now. This is a select few. And God just, the way we change that is just make a little adjustment down on the inside and say, I see that word. I hear that revelation. And I'm just going to make that little adjustment down on the inside. And I'm going to yield myself to the office of the pastor. Amen. Because I'm where God wants me to be. Know that. Amen. And you're going to watch your life change. Pastor and I have done it. We've lived without a pastor and we live with. I'm going to tell you, with is much better. Amen. 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 Why don't you be seated just for a moment? Hallelujah. Now, so some of the things uh, Pastor Jay was talking about are... Uh, you know, he's talked about uh, the ministry gifts, and they are a ministry gift to the body of Christ. I want you to understand that. They're a ministry gift to the body of Christ. Now, what you were allowed to do is to come into their room. You were allowed to come into their room, their spiritual room. A powerful spiritual room. If I, if I have somebody come in and I invite somebody into my house, I don't invite everybody into my house, but you come into my house, you get to partake of the blessings in my, in, uh, in my house. You know what I'm saying? If I invite you to, to be part, come into my office, in my, my pastor's office, or my, my, uh, my ministry office, or my office in, my, in, my, in the school, you come into my office, and there are certain, certain benefits to that. There are certain benefits that come into the, into the, when you come into the office. Well, today you stepped into their office, their ministry office, their ministry, I'm sorry, not their office, their ministry room. 
Does that make sense? You stepped into their room, and so you partook of some benefits, and he was talking about the rewards to that. There are spiritual rewards to that, spiritual blessings. Amen? And so you have an opportunity tonight because you received of his spiritual blessing. Now you have an opportunity. What a wonderful thing to, uh, to be a, a blessing back. I have someone just recently that we've opened our room to, our house to, our natural house, and they're partaking of some blessing. But they're, at some point they start saying, I want to give something back. Or I asked them to, I asked this person to do something, and because they're partaking of benefits, their, their, their heart wants to give something back. Does that make sense to you? I mean, if, if you're homeless and you get to live in somebody's house and you're living for free, eventually somewhere in your heart you're going to want to give something back. Amen. Amen. Well, this is the same way when you, when you, uh, you got revelation tonight. You received spiritual revelation on some things. You got some spiritual benefits. Amen. You got some spiritual benefits that are eternal. They are eternal. They operate in heaven and earth. I had some guy text me today. Here's a couple. A couple left um, our church because they wanted a better children's program for their, you know, we didn't have a, a little candy bar. There was a bar or something that they, <laughs> you know, the, some of these churches put out bars, you know, for their kids. So they left, the, they left the church and they went over there so their kids could have, you know, these goodies during, the, during their children's ministry. So he texts me and he says, you know, Pastor, I'm ha I, had, I had three dreams and, and these dreams are dreams that I'm going to hell. These dreams are I'm in hell, I'm in hell. And I, Pastor, what is, that? what is that? I'm timid and I'm in hell. And what does that mean? He's texting me. He goes, I'm having these dreams about going to hell, going to hell. So I text him back and I said, well... You're in darkness and you're on the wrong path, for one. And you need to get back to the church or the place where you're supposed to be because you're on the path to darkness and you're going to end up in hell if you don't straighten up. And three times is a clue. <laughs> Amen. 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 This is real what he's talking about. This is a real deal that he's talking about. You get disconnected from your supply, you end up into some dark places, and then you want to blame it. Well, I don't want to go there. Just get right. Just be right. Stay connected. Amen? Amen. What a wonderful opportunity to partake of a ministry gift like Pastor Jay and Pastor Debbie. Amen? I mean, wasn't this beautiful? Amen. Let's just lift our hands and thank Him for it. Father, we thank You, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to enter into their room. Father, we receive it tonight. We receive it tonight with honor. And we honor them tonight. We honor them tonight with the offering, Lord. And we honor them tonight with our words. And we honor them tonight with our heart that they've taken us into deeper places. That they've taken us, Father, into realms, Father, that we need, Father, for this season. We need for this season. And so, Father, we sow our seed tonight into their lives. And we thank you, Lord, that they, Father, are benefit. They will benefit from our offering, Lord. And they will benefit, Lord. And that, Father, they will continue to spread the gospel across the world. Father, we thank you, Lord, that it will be deposited into churches like ours. And it will change us, Lord, and bring us up to another place. And we thank you for it. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So everybody gets an envelope. Including myself. I got mine up here. Everybody gets an envelope. Amen. Everybody, see, here's the deal with this. Is that, is that if we, if we uh, remember, it's what you give. It's a heart. It's your heart giving. Amen. It's your heart giving. And I want you to, I want you to understand that. MJ, you, got a, you need an envelope? I think you have a debit card or something, don't you? Yeah, yes, amen. He's a giver. He's a giver. Yeah, we got to teach our kids, amen. Yeah. Got to teach our kids how to give early on. Does anybody need an envelope? Robert, you need an envelope? You got one? If you don't have any money, get one and, and put it in faith. Amen. amen. Put, you know, amen. Give one and write down, and before you know it, you start giving in the natural. Yeah. Got to do something. Yeah. Yes, amen. amen. Got to do something. Hallelujah.
these lessons, these are, are, are powerful lessons that we learn. Amen. Hallelujah. Young people, I was very proud of you tonight. Very proud of the way you, that you stayed focused. We had some moving around, but I'm telling you, you guys did a great job. You deserve an applause. You guys did a great job. Thank you. You stayed engaged, and, and we appreciate appreciate which, how you stayed engaged. I know you didn't have pizza tonight, but I don't know. Maybe there's some afterwards or something. I don't know. Hallelujah. We're going to miss Pastor Jay, and we're going to miss uh, Pastor Debbie. Pastor, well, how many would like him to come back again? Amen. Amen. So uh, we're going to have, uh, we'll, let's see if it'll work in their schedule. Pastors, would you come back and bless us sometime? Amen. Thank you, Lord. So um, next time they're in, in the area, we want them to come our way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many, did you like that testimony Francis gave last night about her t teaching her children to lay her hands on her car and all of a sudden that money showed up? That's what he was talking about today. Right now, when you, got, when you came up here for that financial blessing, he blessed you and you charged your angels. And now all you got to do is just thank the Lord for it. Amen. Just thank the Lord for it. He'll bring it. He'll bring it for you. I, I'm, you know, I, did, I, did, I have so much on my heart. The Lord's going to do some powerful stuff with us. And you're going to be part of that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up your offering. Father, we thank you, O oh God, that you are the God, Father, the giver of life. And Father, we step into life tonight. And Father, we give, Father, with a, with a joyful, cheerful heart tonight. And we sow our seed. And we know, Father, that this is a time, Father, where we are able to plant. And as we plant our seed, we know that it will produce for us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, Father, that it will, it will grow. It will grow, Father. It will grow. First the bud, hallelujah, then the ear, then the full corn, Father, in the ear. We thank you for it. We thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that we will reap. We will reap tonight. We will reap, Father. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There's a strong anointing on this offering. There's a strong anointing. You feel that? There's a strong anointing on this offering right now. Hallelujah. So, Father, we sow it. And we sow it in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you. So I want you to say this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive the harvest. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. I expect a blessing. I expect finances. I expect buildings. I expect material things to come my way for the glory of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, in this, when I started praying over this, I started seeing the harvest. I started, see, did you see that, honey? Did, were you feeling that? I started seeing the harvest already on this, on the offering and this giving. What happened here tonight? Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. So let's receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Us should serve the people. Hallelujah. 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 I have computers over here for you guys. Did you see? I, can't, I don't know. You got your faith out on that? I came over here and I just saw computers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you're equipping the whole new building? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. They're the ones that are needing them. Amen. Hallelujah. We have them. You have them. We have them. We all. It's good. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> wow. You gotta get this. 
in the spirit. If you have what you have in the spirit, you got to have in the spirit before you get in the natural. Wow. Hallelujah. Stand with me. We're going to bless you as you go home. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Let's just lift our hands. Father, we thank you for these series of meetings. Father, we've been changed. We've been changed. We've been changed. So we receive it. We thank you, Lord. We count it an honor. We've sowed our time. We've sowed, Father, into you. And we receive it. We receive the blessing. And thank you, Lord, for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Somebody, before you leave the house, we love you. See you Sunday. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Carissa, you can uh, throw some music on there.